Welcome to the second part of Revelation 2, in which I will tell about the Church of Pergamum and Tiratira. In uh, Pergamum was uh, Satan worshipped, and this temple is moved, reconstructed, and Berlin. Most likely the beast will be worshipped in this temple in Berlin. So what Jesus says about the church of Pergamum. This is what he says, who has the two-edged sword, a repetition of caption 1 verse 16. The two-edged, double-edged sword is a definition between Christians. True Christians who live under the control of the Holy Spirit, the wise versions and the false Christians, the foolish versions who live their own life, who likes the lust in the world. And Pergamos was a city with much sin and wickedness. And the Lord says that Satan has his earthly headquarters in Pergamum. And right in the middle of this sinful and wickedness city, there's the church in the middle of the city. Here by name is called a person, Antipas, who stood for the truth of God. No tolerance. He preached the truth, even if it meant to stand alone. He was a man of conviction and he spoke nobody to his or her mouth. Those who know God and are faithful, you only need to look around to people who do not wish to follow and wish to believe what is preached. No punishment of the word, the Bible, they follow the preachers, the pastors, and that's a great saying. I know a pastor, a father in Belo Horizonte in Brazil, in Palito, with uh, very neatly dressed. And you may say, ah, but you are not very neatly dressed. Oh, here in the north, in Natal, in Panamarin, it is 30 degrees in-house, and I don't have an air conditioning here, so it is very hot, forgive me. So only on special occasions I will dress a tunu. But going back to this father who preaches the word very well, neatly dressed with his children, or a chain in jeans. The church is <laughs> more like a disco with disco lights. But like my wife says, God look at the heart. But take this to heart because for me, the inner, your heart reflects on your outside. So go back to Antipas. He stands alone, preached against everyone who didn't wish to believe, preached to all the people, to everyone in the world. And as a result, he was killed because he wasn't everybody's friend and therefore he couldn't escape death. He was killed because he clung to the 
the revealed truth of God and he make no concessions. Most likely people probably called him narrow-minded, stubborn, difficult to handle and not good headed. But it didn't matter to him. He proclaimed the truth. He stood before his Lord in the middle of this temple of Satan. And after his death, the town of Perkinum deteriorated rapidly because nobody took over his duties. Isn't that the great thing? Aren't we seeing great persons, but nobody is following her up and continue telling the truth, the sad history of many churches. So the Bible tells also about Balaam. Although the smooth sayer Balaam spoke piteously, his heart wasn't focused on the Lord, but focused on the reward of the king Balak. You can read that also as well in Jude verse 9, 11. Although God forced him to bless Israel, he blessed three times, but Balaam gave the advice to Balak to seduce the Israelites into fornication with Moabite women. Balak is a model of wickedness and apostasy. Although many Christians have accepted Jesus Christ as a Savior, the heart is not full of repentance, but full of the lust of the world. They do not care about their neighbors, they only have their own greed. And what was the end of Balak? His death. So Christians who do, do not truly repent and change their lifestyle, their end is the death. No raptor at the church, no lifting up to heaven. And if you are lucky, you get a second chance and you decide for Jesus in the great tribulation, but you will not go to heaven, but only to the new earth. The tooth adds sword, the division. Take it serious, take it to heart. It is a two double edged sword, sharp with the fishing, or the other way, or the other way. A middle road, there isn't. So this. Let her also speak of the manna. The manna was the food that the Israelites had to gather daily in the desert. It was given daily. Yet to gather it every day. And the manna is told that it was hidden. Why hidden? Well, in the Old Testament, nobody knew about the church, the Christians. It was hidden. And now for the Christians, this hidden mama, the gospel, Jesus Christ, the forgiveness of sin, the rapture of the church, we need to study, we need to make it known. The manna 
is the New Testament, but including the Old Testament, which explains the symbols. And yes, this manna we need to eat daily. We need to study daily the Bible. We need to take notice of the will of God and living according daily to the will of God. The manna is the spiritual daily food for the believer full of the Holy Spirit. Yes, and then we have the white stone. Well, I was lucky to find it on the internet. The white stone is an all-purpose cleaner, ideal for cleaning all smooth surfaces without scratching. The efficient operation of the white stone is very effective. The white stone can effortlessly clean stainless steel, chrome, glass, sanitary wear, bathrooms, sinks. And for the kitchen, all pots and tiles, hops and ceramic hops can be cleaned without any problem in a safe way. In addition, using the white stone will also significantly extend the life of your surfaces. What a marvelous description. And here it is given the white stone. It is Jesus who perfectly cleans the Christian If you believe, confess your sins, Jesus is the white stone who cleans with his blood of your sins and extends your life. Where? After death, in heaven, and if you are very disobedient, if you are lucky, on the new earth. But Jesus is the one who extends your life. So that's the letter to Smyrna. So now we go to the church of Tyatira. The words of Jesus Christ to the church at Tyatira. A repetition of Revelation 1, the verses 14 to 15. We need to explain a little bit Jezebel was the wife of the Israeli king Ahab. In one kings, she is sketched as an imperious woman who perseverance at all cost, even over dead bodies. What she wanted, she took, even if it meant killing. What she wanted, she took at all cost. Jezebel completely controlled her husband and king and worshipped Baal and Asad. We have the story of the offering, the 500 uh, prophets of Jezebel, they were challenged to prove the existence of Baal. They danced the whole day. They cut themselves in the end. But Baal didn't respond with fire and ignited the sacrifice. And there was the prophet of God He took the sacrifice, built the altar, persons throw tres, three cans of water above the sacrifice, the stones, and God sent the fire and consumed the stones and the sacrifice, even it was wetted. The proof 
that God is the only God. And these false prophets were killed and Jezebel was very angry. In the end she died, she was thrown out of the tower and eaten by the dogs. Written is here, you should not lead into fornication, no sex before the marriage, no adultery if you are married, and especially not with children or animals, and it is a great thing if you practice these things as a pastor. Also is forbidden the eating of idol sacrifices. And then we see this in our time happening. Laws are free. Governments do not respect anymore the laws of Jesus Christ, the Bible, and God the Father. And also the churches, they are tolerant. The pastors proclaim that everything is allowed they are seeking their own wealth. They do not care anymore about their uh, neighbors. There's a tolerance for everything. Even what the Bible is strictly telling, which is forbidden. God's word, the Bible, is not longer taken literally. Jesus, as the Son of God, is denied. Jesus is not God. The resurrection is a beautiful story, but not truth. So if there is no resurrection, if there is no life after death, so what's the purpose of Christian faith? You can't throw it in the rubbish bin. And what is told here clearly, Behold, I, Jesus, will throw these false teachers and pastors on a sickbed. And I, Jesus, will throw into big tribulation. Very clear, eh? These pastors, these preachers, these false prophets, they will stay behind at the rapture of the church and pass through the great tribulation. And they and the followers will most likely die in that great tribulation. And if I may say so, their end will life end in the lake of fire because I don't think they will accept Jesus Christ. It continues, I will search kidneys and hearts and reward everybody to his or her words. If they do not repent in the great tribulation and do not follow the beast, they will get life on the new earth. But if not, their faith is the second death, the lake of fire. So, this call is to endure and hold on until the second coming of Christ at the Great Tribulation. Then the 1000 years of Christ will begin. But now is the call to accept Jesus Christ. Take this warning series. Repent. Go living under the Holy Spirit because this warning is serious. If you do not repent, you go through the great tribulation and if you repent, you will take part in the rapture of the church. The next sermon will be Revelation 3. Thank you.